If you like spending time in Manhattan's Greenwich Village, you can largely thank a woman named Jane Jacobs. She led the successful fight to block a highway from cutting right through that neighborhood and also won many other preservation battles in New York. A new book called Eyes on the Street tells the story that she lived. And we spoke with its author, Robert Knoggle, a short time ago. Well, we'll talk about her legacy in a minute, but explain to the audience how basically a woman largely of just a high school degree goes to New York City and she goes from being a secretary to a journalist to, I guess, an architecture critic to an internationally renowned author. Uh, talk about uh, that kind of a, a rise, especially in the day and age where you don't really see that out of too many women, certainly at that time of day. We don't see it among too many anybody. She was a remarkable woman. She was uh, incredibly intelligent and uh, tenacious, uh, fascinated by the world, and she got fascinated by the world around her house in Greenwich Village, and that was the start of um, her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. You know, Robert, I think if you say to a lot of people, urbanist or uh, city planner, their eyes will glaze over, but if anyone loves New York, when I say New York, I mean all of New York with all the quirks that I think make it the most amazing city in the world. It very easily could have been something resembling L.A. right now, if not for her. Talk about how, uh, you know, things like uh, mixed-use neighborhoods, the idea of short blocks you can walk, how she really was the bulwark that stopped the Robert Moses and the rest here from putting highways in places that we now, you know, think it would be impossible to be anything what they are in the city. You're saying it. Uh, there are at least two ways in which she helped make New York a better city. One is what a lot of people understand about having battled uh, Robert Moses. Robert Moses had this plan for an expressway going through Lower Manhattan that would have destroyed all of Lower Manhattan. There would be no Soho. There would be none of what is so appealing about Lower Manhattan now, and the neighborhoods north of it would have been affected as well. That's at one level, at the level of an activist. Jane was an activist, but she didn't think of herself as an activist. She was an author, she was a writer, she was a thinker, and the influence of the death and life of great American cities on New York and on other cities was profound in some of the ways that you described. She talked about what makes for a healthy neighborhood. One of the things was a certain amount of density. You don't want things spread out all over the place. The, the, the suburban thinking of the post-war period was towards spreading things out and getting connected by car and uh, no critical mass of human, human presence. And what Jane saw in the neighborhood around her house and what Jane argued for was to maintain that critical mass that people thought in terms of, oh, crowding, that's a bad thing. And she thought in terms of, yes, let's have lots of people for the vibrancy that that gives to a city and a neighborhood. She certainly was quite a character, as you put in your book here. She was raised uh, in a household that embraced debate here and sometimes a good spirited argument. That carried out throughout her life. Uh, she had a rough edges too, didn't she? Well, you could call them rough edges. You could just call her Jane. <laughs> She's, she was an amazingly spirited person, and she was personally grateful. She said this. She was grateful for having been brought up in a family that permitted, that allowed, that encouraged uh, debate and, and disagreement and lively argument. And in later years, the kitchen table, wherever Jane was living, whether it was down in, 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 on, West, on Hudson Street in the village or in Toronto, was routinely the scene for spirited debate in her house. People would come over, whether they were politicians or planners or whatever, or just friends, and everybody would be sort of waiting for, what is Jane going to be talking about today? And they would engage in, in debate and, and disagreement, and Jane always brought the depths of her reading and her thinking to everything. And she did this in her activist role also. She always had a command of the numbers, the facts, that she was able to throw back to her antagonists in, for example, in New York. And certainly the activism wasn't just relegated um, to architecture or to city planning. Uh, she was an opponent of the Vietnam War. In fact, she had two sons who were of eligible age. And then just one night or one morning, I should say, her family 
up and they went to Toronto and that's where the final chapters of her life were, weren't they? The final chapter is extending over 38 years. Uh, yes, in 1968, uh, Jane, after protesting the Vietnam War, Jane and Bob, her husband, saw her adult children coming of age and potentially becoming cannon fodder for the war. And the choices were either the kids end up in jail because they refuse to go to Vietnam, or they wind up in Vietnam getting killed or uh, and or killing people, or they moved to Canada. And Bob had made a kind of an exploratory trip to Canada earlier and came back and said to Jane, there's a great big country up there. Let's go there. And Jane, I think, resisted a little bit at first, but finally they made their way there and they made new lives in a new country. Interesting, a person who helped uh, define at least the New York uh, City that we know now finished um, uh, her uh, second half of her life, if you will, north of the border. Um, a fascinating figure, I admit, before I saw the book here, uh, I didn't know that much about her, knew the name, but I didn't know the imprint that she left behind. But again, the book is Eyes on the Street, The Life of Jane Jacobs. Robert Canigal, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with our Hudson Valley headlines next.